Let's talk a little bit about the big board. If you've paid attention to elections on our platforms, you will have certainly seen this. None other than Steve Kornacki, the man himself, is here to share the magic behind the tech alongside Sam Swartz, NBC News senior software engineering manager. Uh, Steve, some powerful data in there. I've used that thing before. It's a little intimidating. Walk us through everything that goes into the big board and how it works. Uh, yeah, no, thanks, Brian. Great to be with you. And I mean, yeah, this is sort of, we're three weeks out from the election, so I feel like I'm surgically attached to this thing at this point. We got all sorts of data, all sorts of uh, elections all over the country. We're getting ready to track on election night. But the thing is, when it comes to this, from my perspective, it is sort of like, you know, driving a car. I, I know to get in the driver's seat, do the steering wheel. I have no idea how it all works. And that is where Sam Schwartz comes in here. Uh, Sam, First of all, maybe just introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about what it is you do here. Yeah, sure. So I'm Sam, and I'm a senior engineer here. So I uh, actually joined NBC in 2018, and I started working on the midterms actually on our digital side of the house. Uh, I liked it so much that I ended up deciding, why not manage some teams that also work on politics? So now I manage two engineering teams here. So I work on one team with digital and then obviously one team with broadcast, and we, we build all this amazing stuff that we then use for telling election stories. So, so tell us, uh, maybe back up a step here, how, how it is that you got into this kind of field to begin with? What's, what's the origin <laughs> story here? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it was completely by accident. Uh, I went to college to become a classical opera singer. My parents were thrilled, obviously. Uh, they encouraged me to double major, and luckily for me, my alma mater actually had a really unique major called Interactive Multimedia that had a combination of journalism and design and also software development. So I think probably, I wanna say it was like somewhere around my sophomore year, I had to decide between taking another music history class or doing some stuff with programming and building things. And I really did not want to take another music history class. It kind of just decided itself, I think, at that point. Ultimately, it was an easy choice and it's, it's been something that I've been in love with ever since. Uh, you ever think about what could have been as an opera singer? You know, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm okay leaving that one behind, honestly. I think, I think I'm, I'm really happy. I'm still able to do all the things that I'm passionate about, so it's, it's all good there. Uh, it worked out good from our end, and I also know it's a dilemma I personally have never faced in my life and probably <laughs> never will. So let's take a, a closer look at some of the things we can do with the board here. Here's something, it, it, looking ahead to election night in a couple of weeks, obviously battle for control of the House is going to be a major story. So what you're looking at here, these are all 435 districts around the country. Let's just zoom in and kind of give you an example of some of the stuff we can do with this, we'll be doing on election night. Here, here we go. This is the 34th district of Texas. This is D Deep in South Texas. I think this is a really interesting storyline itself. We'll certainly be spending a lot of time on election night talking about, but just in terms of what we're able to do with the board here, you know, a couple things jump out. First of all, in any district around the country, so here we go, Texas is 34th. We'll have the results as they come in. And one thing we'll be able to do is right away say, well, how do these results tonight, will, there will be numbers here election night, match up with the 2020 presidential election results from that district? It gives you a really good basis for comparison, and you can even go further back in time and see the trends. And that's one of the stories in South Texas, the trend from 2016 to 2020, it favored the Republicans. And you can even then go a step further, break it down to the county level within the district. This is one of my favorite things. And again, you can see the trend match it up with how it's going. How to tell us like behind the scenes to get sure. this level of data, this precision, how does that happen? So, I mean, we work really closely with the decision desk to make all of these numbers happen. Obviously, I mean, we've already heard it before. We need to be fast, we need to be accurate. So it's really important that when we're showing this data that it's correct. So additionally here with the counties especially, that's something we work really closely with the decision desk on because this is not necessarily something that you're just going to find. You know, we need to model this, especially because the congressional districts have shifted since 2020. So we need to work really closely with them. And it's, it's always a really intricate process to make sure that we're absolutely giving the most up-to-date, the most accurate information. So it's, it's really a partnership to get all this data on the screen. So that way you can tell the story at the end of the day. Yeah, no, I don't envy you guys this year because, as you say, redistricting, the redrawing of all the lines and all the numbers shifting, and it's been an added complication. Um, big picture. Um, there, there's so much going on mm -hmm. here. Can you tell, is there, is there a secret to the big board? You know, I honestly think the biggest secret about it is that this is not a native application. It looks like it, right? It's so interactive. You can click into things. It's designed that way, and our designers and our engineering teams work super hard to make that happen. 
but it, underneath, this is just a website. It's no different than if you were to go to Google or Twitter or any other website. This is web technology that's making this possible. And I think that's maybe not very obvious in this setting. You know, we're seeing it in this really interactive way. But it really shows how we can push web technology to take it beyond just websites in the same way that we heard how we're taking you know, video graphics and we're pushing them beyond standard applications. We can do the same thing here. It's really cool. And it, it sounds like uh, we have a question, I think. Uh, is Priscilla Thompson standing by? That's right, we are here, uh, and I'm here with Danny Mudvari. He is a senior hoping to become a tech director one day, and Danny's got a question. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, what kind of software and hardware are we able to use as students now to adapt to industry standards by the time we graduate? Absolutely. I mean, so I'm a web developer by trade. So I would say, you know, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, those are my bread and butter. But honestly, I think what it really comes down to is however you want to tell your story. You know, technology is just a tool. As we heard before, it's constantly changing. So you're always going to have to learn new things as you're trying to build whatever it is you're trying to build. So, you know, I wouldn't actually get super hung up on the technology. I would think about what kind of story do you want to tell? How do you want to tell it? And then find the technology that helps you get to that point. Are there any other particular skills or, or if somebody who wants to do mm. what you're doing, be in the world you're in, are there any other particular skills they should be thinking about developing or just things they should be thinking about doing right now to prepare them? I think getting excited and getting passionate about something is honestly really important. You've heard here how hard we work to make all of this come together. That will not happen if you're not excited about what you're working on. So, I mean, if I wanted to get really into the nitty gritty, we use like Mapbox down here to make all these maps happen. We also use D3, which is a JavaScript library that helps us build different charts. Those are all really awesome tools that are in our tool set that we use all the time. But yeah, honestly, getting excited, being passionate about what it is that you want to build is going to take you through and actually make you want to learn all that new stuff versus going out and me telling you, go learn D3. I mean, that's, that's great and all, but it may not be the most compelling way for you to really apply yourself and learn. I, I don't, some of the questions are written for me, but this one I've been told to ask you, and it is, is it to operate the board, mm. are you required to wear khakis? You know, I didn't, I didn't bring really full on khakis, but I felt in the spirit of khakis today. I, you know, we should make it a rule. To operate the board, you should have to wear khakis. It's just, it's part of the process. Here, here's my little secret of, of the big board. There was a time I was using this thing and I wasn't wearing khakis. It, it was an accident of 2020 and now. <laughs> you can never go back to that. And now that's all that happened. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much though. I, I feel like I understand a little bit more about this now, Sam. Um, like I said, it's, it's, I know this as, as a user, but uh, I'm kind of oblivious to what goes on behind the scenes, but I, I really appreciate the work. I know there's a ton of work that goes on behind the scenes, and I really Definitely. appreciate that.